What's up guys, Fahad here. Welcome back to the Ultimate Review. This EV is kindly uh, loaded up to me from Giga Rider. I do check out their website and a whole range of other bikes they have to offer. Okay guys, so we're in the Pasir Panjang area and we are here to test out this EV scooter. As you can see, there's actually a R&D plate over here, research and design. My first time riding an R&D plate bike. The certain conditions, because this bike is still under trial, I cannot mention the name or the brand of the scooter lah. But obviously, if you guys know what it is, you know what it is. Maybe the model I can say is actually the Smart Scooter that is the model name the brand I cannot say but if you all can read you all know it is you all know it is once again huge thanks to Giga Rider for loaning me this EV for the review and this is actually on trial it's still on trial to see the feasibility of having a battery swapping uh, kind of scooter here in Singapore and in his home country maybe you can say the country lah Taiwan it's a ride share kind of thing though you are able to own one of these bikes outright and secondly the battery swapping network there's also a subscription based model that riders use typically the owners or riders of this particular bike they don't charge it at home so they make use of this battery swapping infrastructure lah in Singapore there's currently two stations I would think that it's not a viable bike to do long distance or delivery uh, maybe as a commuter to and fro work I reckon that you probably need to increase the amount of charging stations island wide only then we can replicate the ecosystem that Taiwan or in this case Taipei has so there's actually some EV bikes here in Singapore the CEO4 that I've tested recently but why is this particular bike in uh, R&D plate well as I've said it's currently under trial to test out the feasibility of this battery swapping infrastructure currently LTA does not allow EVs with battery access to be sold to general consumers um, this is from what I heard lah but over time with the completion of this trial who knows things may change and unlike the CEO4 which I tested earlier its peak generating power is 31 kilowatts so only class 2 riders can ride it this particular model is 4.6 kilowatts somewhat close to 1 to 5 cc meaning 2B holders also can ride this and P-platers can start riding one right away ha 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 let's sit on the bike uh. pretty simple pretty straightforward uh. Uh, to turn on the bike it doesn't use a key it actually uses a card it's a card access Similar to Tesla, where you put it on the B pillar to actually unlock the bike, right? For this one, just tap over here at the IQ Smart Lock. Hello. <laughs> and I must say, this bike is very noisy. Yeah, there's a lot of sounds emitting for it. Uh, just such as when you are riding very slowly, uh, using the turn signals. So, let's sit on it. Okay. Oh, I have to say... It's very light, it's very light, 122 kg, comparing it to a Vespa Primavera at 117 kg. So we got a 7 kilowatt per hour lithium ion battery with a recorded range of supposedly 170, but the guys at Giga told me that uh, it'll probably be able to do 100. Once it gets to 30 kilometers of range left, I gotta find a stopping station already. So maybe we're gonna head there after this. So currently according to the LCD gauge cluster, we got 87 point five kilometers of range left once again start the bike ah uh, you tap your access card at the iq smart lock press the front brake press go and there will be a sound and the lcd will say go <laughs> so yeah you can straight away go lah it's quite a noisy bike so if you go very slowly uh, like maybe seven kilometers per hour or ten below ten kilometers per hour because this ev is new kind of thing right it's very silent it's very quiet people wouldn't know that whether you are whether it's, is it working or not? Is it working? Is it working? But the sound that it emits is to tell the rider that the bike is actually in motion. And also to tell people around you that there's an EV or this bike is nearby. And it also makes the same sound when you are using the reverse gear. There's also a reverse gear on it. Uh, similar to the Quantum Mobility, similar to the BMW C04, the Iona wrap that the Singapore's bike has. So I think it's quite common for EVs to have a reverse gear. And also there's this regen light over here. So regen Braking is present, basically feeding back power to the battery. Lot to cover. Ah. 
So let's accelerate. So above the 25, the beeping stops. Actually, yeah, uh, feels like just a normal bike. Uh. Only that it's quieter. Maybe if you have ridden a uh, e-scooter before, it will feel similar. Only that this is actually a motorcycle. Uh. Woo! The pickup is quite good, quite decent. But comparing it to the CO4, it's meh. But the pickup is surprisingly good. I mean, all electric bikes usually have good pickup. Uh. Whew. Suspension wise uh, It's not that good I can really feel every bump On the road right now But that is not why You ride uh, This kind of bike In the first place lah. It's more of a Commuter bike Point A to point B Delivery riders I mean it's in, in his home country Of Taiwan Oh what happened here in his home country of Taiwan People use this bike to get from point A to point B Delivery, blah 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 It's more of a workhorse As opposed to it being a Lifestyle kind of thing And honestly it's a fun bike to ride And it does really well in Tight corners So when you use the indicators right There's gonna be this irritating sound <laughs> and it's auto cancelling guys auto cancelling you know wow but if it doesn't auto cancel ah, you press the button again then it will auto cancel ah. similar to Harley kind of thing there's no dedicated button that cancels the indicators so we're going downhill and probably helps because uh, going downhill or having this regen thing Going downhill, it doesn't use out a lot of power. It feeds back power to the battery. See, when it feeds back power to the battery, the battery symbols kind of uh, flicker. But I'm not sure if you can see because Charles Charles' video also had some flickering from this LED, LCD gauge cluster. I feel as if like, I'm riding an e-scooter, honestly speaking. Cute little bike. Very reminiscent of a Vespa. Wow, I didn't know Singapore got this kind of place. Eh. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Okay, so now the problem is how to get out of this place. It's awfully too quiet, uh, and especially when your surroundings is very quiet. It feels pretty weird, I must say. Just like riding the CO4, you can hear the birds chirping, the crickets cricketing. <laughs> and then this guy over here just using the leaf lower. And the uh, whirring sounds of the bike. It's also quite prominent, uh, but it's awfully too quiet, uh, guys. You hear sounds that you don't normally hear when you're riding a uh, internal combustion engine bike. I think there's I think it's noisy it's because they're like trying to figure out riders who are hopping on the bike for the first time. This bike doesn't have any noises. It feels very really weird lah. Not to ride a noisy machine. Eh. Oh look at that. Riding it around for a while and it's already 83 Still 83 kilometers of range left I think the regen really helps huh? Because mostly it's like start stop I'm riding downhill right now, I'm not using the uh, throttle So it's feeding back the power into the battery yeah. First unveiled in 2017, the Smart Scooter 2 Series is an updated version of the original Smart Scooter it addresses the shortcomings of its predecessor with improvements made from the trials, data, and feedback gathered from consumers. Instead of relying on charging stations to recharge, the Smart Scooter 2 uses its own propriety battery swapping station and its network with the potential to have its own ecosystem. With heavy use in ride sharing and B2B solutions, trials have been ongoing in some developing markets, cities, and B2B partners to test out the smart scooter feasibility. Engine is a liquid-cooled G2.2 synchronous electric motor, permanent magnet with a one-speed automatic. Okay guys, so as usual, I'm gonna start off with the riding position. Okay, so sitting on this scooter right now, as you can see, if you've ridden a Vespa, if you've ridden automatic scooters, uh, it's very comfortable. Uh. Right height of 78cm, I'm 165, and as you can see, I am flat footed on the ground, very suitable for shorter riders. But after riding for a while, for quite a while, you do take hunch your back. 
So I do strain it from time to time. And also my butt does get kind of sore after uh, riding it for more than 30 minutes. It's yeah, something you need to bear with. Um, but at the same time, I would reckon that maybe food delivery riders will always up and moving, you know. So they wouldn't be really be riding it for almost all the 30 minutes duration. And at a weight of 122 kg, is very light. Yeah, look at me. Pushing the bike, no issues. Uh. <laughs> so I think if you're not strong enough, you know, I think this is the perfect bike for you. And I'm quite surprised that for EV, they're able to accomplish the weight savings on it. But I noticed that they use a lot of plastics, so having plastics, it's a light material, maybe it helps. Okay, so I'm next to come to the general design of the Smart Scooter 2. Of course, on first impressions, it really strongly resembles a modern era Vespa. And honestly speaking, I'm not surprised on why they picked out such a platform. The electric bike platform uh, really works well on this scooter sort of design. There's no changing of gears. Under seat area can house batteries, small and compact for urban use. And it's just easy to maneuver in heavy traffic or start stop situation, lane splitting and everything. So it does make sense for and the Spark Scooter 2 to resemble uh, Vespa. Lah. For the Spark Scooter 2, it's meant to address the shortcomings of the Smart Scooter 1. Um, while the original looks kind of futuristic, the 2 is more traditional and relatable to what a scooter would typically look like. Yeah. Body panels are all flushed down to the failure pool pack. Uh, there's no vents, very curvy and retro looking. The round mirrors also add a nice touch. Lights, there's simply two strips front and rear. Indicators are integrated into the body. And personally, I feel that the overall design resembles a uh, Piaggio Safera. Maybe a modern iteration of it. it really has somewhat similar design cues. Uh. Okay, so I'm next to come to the handlebar. Handlebar controls and the gauge cluster. Okay, so for the handlebar, as you can see, it's very Vesperish. The riding controls also, they are pretty much uh, integrated into the plastics. I'm not really keen once again because it's very difficult to put in accessories. For this case, uh, they have mount the IU unit and the phone mount on the mirror stocks itself. So as for the riding controls, uh, as you can see over here to the left, okay, in the front over here, we got a reverse gear, high beam, low beam, passing light, signal indicators. So we got a horn below it. To the right over here, we got the hazard. And below it, if you push down, it's actually to access the underseat storage. We got the trip meter and the speedometer toggle. And this smart button over here, I'm not sure what the smart button actually does, but is there. <laughs> Basically, that's it. Very simple, very straightforward. To turn on the bike, it actually uses a card. So just tap the card. In the IQ spark lock over here, you hear a beep and you'll see hello, okay? Very simple, very straightforward. Doesn't show off any complicated stats or whatsoever. The bike doesn't actually turn on when the main stand or the side stand is down. So I have to actually balance my body on the bike to prop it up. <laughs> you can see the speedometer lighting up, okay? And this tells you the battery percentage, the clock and the range of battery has left. So when the region is activated, this thing will flicker. So you can toggle between the range, autometer, trip meter, and back to the range. So very basic, uh, very straightforward. There's a high beam button over here. And flashing, signal indicators. It will make a very irritating noise <laughs> as they're activating the indicators. And uh, yeah, this goes for same for the right also. To cancel, simply press the button again. And then there's also hazards on here. Turn off the bike. So of course, the Smart Scooter 2 does not rely on a charging port. In fact, there's no charging port. I've looked around and it heavily relies on battery swapping and its ecosystem. There's home charges for you to charge the batteries at home, but ultimately it wants you to use its battery swapping system instead. And there are subscription plans in its home country, but we're not sure about Singapore. All I know is when we go to the battery swapping station, just put in the battery, swap, and get out of there. Details on that are not available right now. Okay, so the battery... <laughs> Very heavy, yeah. 
11 kg and there's actually a name for this battery and it's not double A or triple A or whatever A yeah. it's called the brand name Network Smart Battery and they would like to boast that swapping can be done within 30 seconds as simple as this bike actually is of course being an electric bike you can expect some of the riding technology to be integrated inside this like, to make riding easier to mention we got smart lock using a card access in certain countries you can even use your phone full led lighting all around auto cancelling signal indicators combined abs by bosch paired with disc brakes and calipers for suspension we got non-adjustable telescopic forks in the front dual shocks in the rear carbon belting to add on there's over 80 sensors on the whole of this bike to ensure all of its functionality stays perfectly in tune led gauge cluster and has the lights so for the colors uh, doing my research uh, overseas especially yeah, there's a lot of eye candy and very attractive bright colors for the smart scooter 2 according to the website um, there's really no mention of uh, the kinds of colors they offer la. so we're gonna enter into PIE let's see if it can keep up with the highway speeds starting to rain a little so hopefully it doesn't get too heavy okay picks up the speed very fast actually not too bad but like comparing this to the co4 definitely the co4 does better in terms of acceleration and all that because the peak generating power is different so that's why i think for singapore to have the evs for motorcycles divided into uh, the respective classes makes sense lah. i would say that it's doing well on the highway i'm surprised but the battery depletes very fast when you're in the highway because regen is basically absent and the bike is fighting with the wind uh, trying to keep up to speed interesting to be riding a R&D plate I think the company on their end they're gathering some data to see the feasibility of the battery swapping motorbike in Singapore it's case you ask me uh, if you have ridden a Vespa uh, it feels similar lah only that it's quiet <laughs> And basically there's no uh, engine idle or engine noise So you won't get the vibration or rumbling on your hands and on your feet So pretty in interesting right lah Comparing it with the CO4 The range anxiety is something to be wary about lah Because right now as, as I'm riding back on the highway ah, The battery is depleting very fast guys you know, when I thought the Zontes 350E indicators were irritating I find this one even more irritating <laughs> I think given that this bike is supposed to be a, a trial kind of thing uh, The company also provides this uh, battery swapping service So there's this ecosystem that is complementing The bike lah I get worried over the range anxiety lah the highway part I'm not really enjoying the ride because of the range anxiety kind of thing on the CO4 I'm barely using my brakes uh, because the regen braking on the CO4 is very strong it's like as if you're using the brakes already when you slow down the bike but for this particular EV uh, you need to use the brakes uh, because the regen doesn't really stop the bike uh. it doesn't even really slow down I feel but I can see that on the display that it is feeding power back to the battery getting a lot of looks <laughs> from some people lah. I mean it's a R&D plate kind of bike alright so we are at one of the mana the punya ni eh battery swap battery swap ya jalan terus eh ok so this is one of the two designated battery swaps for this particular EV right here the dealer cycle and carriage that brought in this bike ah. oh here so here it is the battery swapping nice Okay, so this is formed by the guys at Giga. There's two slots right now. Okay, so uh, let me open up the under seat. Okay, so I just take out the batteries. Oh my god, it's heavy. <laughs> 11 kg. Go <laughs> I just put it. Alright. Okay, so we just wait for this. 19.9 MPS of usage since the last swap Okay, oh man, so cool Put it back 
Oh man, this is so cool <laughs> Wow Okay, so let me turn on the bike again Alright Let's go I had one day with this particular brandless EV The Smart Scooter 2 That's the model name by the way uh, The brand I cannot mention because this is a pilot test Once again, huge thanks to Giga Rider for loaning me this bike for the review You guys can actually check this bike out and rent it from them So of course, obviously, the point of this review is not to show off the bike or its capabilities lah, But rather, the battery swapping infrastructure and the means of electrification in Singapore If you ask me, I think it's a great commute bike It will serve well as a ride share Also will serve our delivery riders well With more battery swapping stations To own one outright, um, I feel it's not worth it Unless you don't leave the country Unless you're not the kind who go to Johor and have a night out with your friends You don't go touring Also the fact that bikes are expensive here And to own a bike that is only limited to commuting or food delivery Defeats the purpose of owning a motorcycle It is a lifestyle machine after all Also even though a rider may say that you want to buy a bike because it's for transport But eventually you will adopt the biker lifestyle one Personally as a workhorse as a food delivery and also ride sharing yeah as a transportation you say maybe suddenly you want to like go from point a to point b and you there's a ride sharing motorcycle nearby ev bike is going to help facilitate that lah. so once again huge thanks to giga rider for loaning me this bike for the review you can check out the website and their social media pages for all of their offerings and that's it for the vlog We'll see you guys in the next one.